Louis Bocchai is an engineer turned entrepreneur. He used to work for Walmart with a large team under him, and then he went the VC route, and now he's co-leading a community of bootstrapped entrepreneurs. Solopreneurs too, and it's a community that I am in. So today's episode is going to be wild. It's sponsored by Acquire.com. More on that later. Now here is Louis. I want to start with the small bets community. I had Daniel Vassalo on, on this show just a year ago, and he was very proudly doing everything by himself at the time. And now what was just one has become two. And I have to know what journey led you to become the after the fact co-founder kind of situation in what is probably the best and most well-organized community in the indie software founder space. So how did that happen? So great question. Um, so I'm going to give you a long-winded answer here, Robert. But, <laughs> sure. I, I, but my entrepreneurial journey started around 2021. I actually raised some VC dollars um, and I was building a SaaS for uh, estate managers. That wasn't working out that well. At least for me personally, I was eating ramen. <laughs> and and I stumbled onto this guy, Daniel Vassalo, who was actually at the time teaching a course called the Portfolio of Small Bets. And it was the philosophy of everything he'd learned so far. And... Um, so, so this guy basically is brain dumping everything he's learned. He's, he's teaching us and he says, look, you know, there's ways to make money online where, where you don't need to eat ramen, right? Like you could, you could put a small book out there. You could put a small course out there. You could put a small app out there. You could time box what you, what you put into it and you could have some sort of thesis. Look, you, you're not going to make millions, but you can make a few dollars. And so I tried it in 22. I basically shifted my mindset. I said, you know, what do I have to lose? I've got a little bit of runway. So I, I placed a ton of small bets in 2022. I was a community member. It wasn't even a community back then. It was just a Discord channel and this course. And so I placed probably 10 different small bets in 2022. And I made money. I wasn't eating ramen. I was eating steak. Okay, not like the Y goo stuff, but, you know, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was, I was eating good, basically. And it was, you know, a, a, a couple of courses, uh, a cohort course, a couple of recorded courses, a book. All these things I did in 2022, I started a newsletter, I started a podcast around engineering career advice, all these different things that I had never thought of that that sort of Daniel exposed me to. And so, you know, I became convinced that actually you can make a pretty good living and some of these things, you know, might become bigger than others. And I think Daniel sort of saw that and at some point in 2023, he approached me, he said, look, um, you know, you're, you're placing a ton of small bets. You're, you're, you're living this lifestyle. And, and do you, do you, do you want to help me with the community? Because, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I feel like there's some things we could do. We could, we could, we could make it better together. And, and, and that's what, that's how it happened basically where I ended up partnering with him in, in 20, um, last year, basically, uh, around, uh, the middle of last year. Yeah, I, I was looking for that tweet when it was announced, and I and I found it just earlier today. It was I, I I was quite surprised when it happened that it happened because I never thought that Dan would take it to a bigger kind of you know stage, the community. But it needed to happen because the community was just growing and growing and growing, right? Like you saw it from the inside. Like was there kind of an internal process? Because I'm I'm looking at this as somebody who is interested in building community himself and who knows that a lot of founders in our community, a lot of creators, are quite aware of the power of a kind of an exclusive uh, invite only or like paid community, right? There's, there's something um, having a strong group of people who really all believe in the same stuff and all want to follow the same dream to reach the same goals. So how was that from the inside? How did you see this progressing? Was there, did, was it instigated by, by anybody but Daniel or did, uh, was that completely his choice to hire at this point? Yeah, it, it was, it was basically completely out of the blue. It was, it was Never something I, I sort of expected in any way. Um, and it's really interesting. Dan Daniel is a very interesting guy, right? Like, obviously, I admire the guy. You know, I learned a lot from him. Probably all the money I made in 2022 is because of the stuff he taught me. Like, he taught all of us, right? He just he just taught us what he had learned. And and so, I, obviously, so so needless to say, I, you know, so if somebody you admire wants to be business partners with you, you're, you know, you're really going to, I mean, you're really going to consider that regardless of what you sort of have going on. But, but what's interesting about Daniel, I think that, that, that I don't see in a lot of people, he's incredibly pragmatic, right? And th there's this guy, Gergay, that has the pragmatic engineer. I, I, it's it's a new, one of the biggest newsletters out there. I think Daniel embodies that. He is the pragmatic engineer. And I mean, he used to be an engineer. So, so it's very, very interesting because the way he approached me was like, look, I've got this business. It's it's making money, but it's slowing down. And I actually think that you know, if I don't do something, it, it, you know, it could disappear. And, and there is a very real chance that 
You become partners with me in this thing and we make no money. Right. And so he just this is the way he thinks. Right. And so, you know, we're going to try things. Some of them might work. Um, but, you know, most people don't. I, most people, I don't think, view things that way. I think most people, you know, are they want to pie in the sky. They want to reach the moon. It's a very different kind of mindset. And I was shocked because I see this business is working. It's making sales. I'm in love with the with the with the community, the people that it's attracting all of these things. And here's this guy telling me that it could die off. And he says, look, if it dies off, I'm going to be sad about it. Right. But, you know, I'm, all, I'm, I'm also not not um, not not expecting it to to become something huge. So do you want to uh, become a part of that and, and try to do something together? So that was the sort of the seeds for the for, for the partnership. You know, it, you know and, and I was I was I was shocked that he invited me to, to, to become a partner in it. And, and, and I think his pragmatism um is contagious, right? And it basically, you know, a lot of the things we've done, we've done very thoughtfully, one small thing at a time, j- just to not basically, um, um, you know, overextend ourselves or, or, or dream pie in the sky stuff that might not never happen, you know? Yeah, man, it, it, it sounds so, so fun to hear you be surprised by a really cool offer, right? Like this is like, hey, w- would you like to make some money? Like, would you like to work on something you already love? Like, who gets this kind of opportunity? That's so cool. It's so cool to hear. No, I mean, it really is, right? Like, it's a working business. He wants you to become 50% partners is what he told me. And he said, you know, you don't have to pay me anything. You know, like who lets you into a working yeah. business makes you 50% partner? I was shy at yeah. first, right? I thought it was too good to be true. I'm like, what is this? I'm pulling my leg? Like, this is ridiculous, right? Like this. And and I thought about it, you know, very quickly. And, you know, I, and, and I said, no, of course I'm going to take it. But it's like, you know, um, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, man, it, it definitely is a much better deal than than anything you can get from a VC. <laughs> you were just gonna say, right? Like that. How does this compare to your prior experience there? Yeah. So great question. I mean, look, VC. Look, we we raised. So I I started this SaaS with with a couple of partners. My brother was one of the partners. Actually, there's four of us in that thing. That thing is still going, and it's it's you know it's it's doing well. But you know when you do a VC when you do a VC back thing, I mean you're all in, right? Like you basically have to. Uh, that has to be the thing you do 24 seven, right? Otherwise people get upset and all of that. And so you're, they, they basically, once you take the VC dollars, you have to commit to making that thing huge because you took their money. And, and this is the thing that was really nagging at me, right? Like uh, here I am eating ramen, like, like basically making peanuts on, you know, you can't take, a, you can't take a big salary on VC money. You can't, you usually can't even take a salary, right? It depends on where you are, what stage you're in. And so um, you're, you're eating ramen and you're working on this thing 24 seven and you're stressed out. And so that whole experience really, I think, burnt me a little bit. You know, it basically when, when, it, and people think usually, right, the trade-off that they're making on the other side is, look, you ha- you could get a really high paying salary in big tech, which is what I had before I did the VC thing, or you could do the VC thing, but they don't see this whole other world where you could just put some ideas out there, actually make money with those ideas on day one, right? They're not, they're never going to be huge ideas, but, but they'll make money. And so, you know, I, I think, I think, um, you know, Daniel exposed me to this whole other way of thinking with, with, um, with, 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 with these projects. And, and, and basically I, I shed off a lot of that, a lot of that, uh, pie in the sky dreaming that, 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 um, that I had acquired while I was under the VC umbrella. And one of the, one of the really nice things is Daniel right from the beginning was like, look, you have your projects. This is one project that we're partners on. Okay. And you and I, we're going to work on this thing together, but you have all this other stuff, you know, keep doing that, you know? And I think VCs don't think like that, right? Like now they own you, like you're on this thing and you're going to be on this thing forever (laughs) or until right. Either it sells or it fails. Right. Um, and it's a very interesting, I think, uh, you know, mindset shift. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's in many ways, I, I'm still kind of convinced that these models are quite similar. Like you, you still, you still want to find the one that works, right? Like even, even with a portfolio of many small bets and I, I do the same thing. I have the podcast, the newsletter, my books, and I, my, my three SaaS businesses that I run on the side, like all of these are small bets. I see one taking off right now and I'm putting more of my effort in there. I even got some funding for this, not VC funding, but kind of funding. So the, it's a v, this VC model is the same thing. It's just that the person actually owning or the the gains from it, right? The, the person the person actually benefiting from it is never really the founder in the VC setting, right? And in, in the small bet setting, the owner operator of all these small bets is you. But you know, and, and you get all the the benefits that come from it. But in the VC world, you might be one the one of a hundred businesses that work, or you're one of the ninety nine that don't, and nothing comes of that for you. 
that that's the difference that I see. Do you, do you see the same thing? Like, is is that similar for you? Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of a lot of ideas come to mind on this topic, but but I I fully agree with you basically. And I think there's just a totally different power dynamic when you have something that's working, right? Um, you know, th- there's nothing wrong with. Uh, I think the guys at Thirty Seven Signals who are you know, an awesome North Star. They make they make software. They've been doing it for years. They've been bootstrapped. Um, they took they took funding from Jeff Bezos, right? And it's actually you know it's very interesting. Um, you know, but they but it wasn't the VC funding. Like when Jeff Bezos invested in that thing, it wasn't it wasn't with the idea that these guys are going to become a billion dollar thing. He just wanted to become a partner with them. He bought a small piece of the thing. And I think it's just a very different power dynamic when you have a business that's working versus you take money from. Um, VCs, when you have just an idea, you've got nothing. And then, you know, you know, the thing might not work. Most of the time it's not going to work. And so now you need funding over and over again. So you're basically trapped in this world until you can make something happen. I mean, otherwise you might not care about the VCs and you might fail and all of that. But I think that's bad too, because you took someone's money, you know, you have an obligation to get them a return. And if you go with that mindset, I think, um, you know, it's just a lot easier when you, when you don't take their money, you can you can you can try all kinds of things, and then the things that are working, if you you know, then it's a small bet for you to take the capital because now the thing's already working, you know. So and it's a very different sort of power dynamic. That, that's what I think, basically. Yeah, make, makes perfect sense, and I love the phrase "trapped." I think that's that's the core, right? Like you, you do something you want to do, you have this dream, you have this idea, but you're kind of trapped in in a cage of somebody else's making around that idea. Right, the, the golden cage in many ways, right? The, the VC money also is a golden cage, just like the, the golden cage exists in the world of semi high paid engineers. I mean, I saw you, you tweet about this too very recently. I, I want to get back to, to your life before this, like your engineering life, because I myself also engineer, became an entrepreneur over time and then became an enjoyer of small bets at some point. So I guess we have quite a similar journey. What made you stop wanting to be a salaried engineer? Because many people listening to this very likely still have a full-time job, like, like most people have, right? Because that's how the world works. But have this this inclination to want to be an entrepreneur at some point, but they haven't really taken the step just yet. What what made you want to take that step? But even raising VC, what made you want to take that step into entrepreneurship back in the day? Yeah, so... um I think I, I sort of always dreamed about going into entrepreneurship. I always had side projects. I would say for many of the engineers that are listening, basically place lots of small bets w- while you have a full-time job. There's nothing wrong with you having a side project. And, and some of the things that work out, you know, that's a really good way to off ramp, right? Uh, I, I, I probably should have, should have been more rigorous about that kind of an approach. I didn't do that, right? I decided, look, uh, you know, basically, I, I was at Walmart for, for a couple of years. Um, I got to Walmart because they acquired this startup I was a part of. I was an early engineer in a startup called Jet. They acquired it for $3.3 billion. They acquired us for the tech and for some of those things. Jet is where I got a lot of my engineering experience, a lot of my engineering management experience. And then at Walmart, they put me in charge of all the modern tech for pharmacy. It was really exciting for a little bit because COVID was happening. Um, we were running these big teams. We were pushing... A, features to apps that impact 100 million customers across the U.S. It felt really impactful. But then around 2021, you know, the bureaucracy kicked in, all these things right now, they're not legal and compliance, and all these people are asking questions like, why did you do this this way? You know, well, because, you know, we had elderly people and they needed pills, you know, and so we just said, screw it, you know, and and, and we got it to them. Um, but it's a very, it's so they, they, they stepped in and then it was just meetings about meetings and about and so I said, look, when am I going to take a, a shot at entrepreneurship if not now? And so in 2021, I decided, you know, screw it. I'm going to quit. And I quit that job. And I, I went and, and, you know, for most people that quit, I think the thing that they think of is, you know, I'm going to go raise some money. Right. I've got an idea. I'm going to go raise some money and we're going to do it that way. And that's what I did. And I think that's basically a huge mistake because now you're trapped. <laughs> now that thing might not work out and, and you're beholden to these people. I mean, you know, if you have morals and ethics and all this stuff. You're beholden to these people because you took their money, right? So it's a very interesting um, thing, I think. Yeah. Did Did you have any like personal savings back in uh, those days? Like I did. So so the one smart thing that I really did that I highly recommend, and and you, go, you know for people listening, is I invested a little bit. You know because I was getting paid really well. Obviously, I was a senior director at Walmart. You know, fifty plus engineers, probably you know, teams all over the world. Uh, I was making good money, you know, at least for like two years after the acquisition, I was making really good money. And I took that money, I invested it basically in, in real estate and I created some rental income. Not not a lot, but it was enough that I basically had 
uh, you know, at least the roof over my head is paid off. So when I quit, even though I'm not going to be making probably nothing, um, I have some money coming in and my family won't start because I have kids, I have a wife. So I highly recommend for engineers listening to this to, to, to consider that, right? To consider something they wouldn't normally consider, some boring type of business, a laundromat, uh, whatever. Just get some cash flow, something that's reliable, steady. And if you can't get the side projects to work out, at least take your money and, and, and make it produce some money. Um, because then at least you have something coming in, you know? And so, and so, and, and, and so that's basically the thing that, that gave me the, the confidence to say, you know what? I can just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit, you know? But I wasn't making a lot. I mean, just basically getting by in the beginning was, 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 was all I had with the real estate. Well, that's all you need, right? At, at that point, that's, that's kind of the baseline. I, I, I know that you wrote a book about this and I know that you gave a lot of talks inside the community. I think even before you worked like for the small bites community, right? Was that right? Like you, you already were teaching some of these, these kind of real estate for developers things. Is, is, yes, am I- so Daniel's very interesting, right? Like he, he let, he allows people in the community to, um, to, to, to teach guest classes is something that he tried as sort of a small bet. I'm going to pay people a thousand bucks for an hour and a half to come and teach us something that they've done themselves. And it's very interesting. And he said to me, Louis, I've seen you, some of your tweets about real estate. You're a big, you know, would you like to teach a class? I never thought about teaching a class on real estate. Come on, man. Like I thought it was, it was like a funny ask. Like I didn't even think they were in the realm of, of, of possibility. And he said, look, you know, you're a beginner and this is important because most of the people that are in the community are beginners. Like it's better to learn from you than from some guy that owns 500 properties now. They, they forgot how to even get started. So very, it was a very interesting thing. And then after I did the classes, I thought, wait, maybe I could like take the transcript from these classes, put it into a book and make a few dollars outside the community. And that yes, was, I love this. I love this so much. It's, this is such a smart way of, of taking your knowledge, like from one medium into the other. First, you had it completely internal because you thought it was only for you. Then somebody kind of pulled at it and said, Hey, actually other people can benefit from it too. Then you taught it and then you kind of productize that into, into a book. That is genius. Just want to mention that this is, this is something that so few people do, even though most people could. I just, I, I'm getting excited just hearing about this journey because I would love to see people take their little niche, weird, unexpected expertise and first teach it to see how it resonates with people and then kind of manifest it into something they can sell while they sleep. Like, how how could you not want this? Well, you know, Arvin, you mentioned this, but you know, I had mentioned earlier that, I, that I've read your books. And I think you, you give this advice in some of those books, right? Embed yourself into these communities. This is how stuff gets pulled out of you because there's there, there are things that you know that you don't even realize that maybe other people want it or they're willing to pay you money for it because it's just something that, you know, you did a while back and, and whatever, right? Like you undervalue things. Most people do that. And so embed yourself in these communities and things get, sort of get pulled out of you. It's a very interesting thing, I think. Um, you see opportunities all over the place, basically, where, where they would, didn't exist before. Yeah, definitely. And I think that the small bets community, this is not sponsored by small bets, even though it should be. But, you know, I, I, I'm myself and part of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the community, right? I'm in there and I occasionally teach in there as well, building a media business, which is literally what we're right doing right now, right? Podcasts and that kind of stuff. So I've seen it from the inside. I've seen it from the outside. I've seen how the community outside of the community reacts to the community and vice versa. What I would like to know as somebody who is both part of the community and operating it, um, you probably see a lot of weird small bets, like people trying to build all kinds of things. And I'm always interested in the stuff you didn't expect. So is there anything, any particular kind of example of small bets in the small bets community right now or in the past that you never thought it would actually be something that could work, but they did work? Well, I think there's, there's, um, it, we're almost starting to categorize them now where, where we're, we're thinking about them in like, you know, for example, like there's a whole class of info product type small bets that I think can get to money very, very quickly in comparison to, let's say, an app. Right. An app usually much longer ramp up. People need to know about it. There's so many more things. And most engineering types would want would rather just write code and they would you know not talk to anybody and just do the code. But there's just something really interesting about first sort of writing a book or recording a small course, putting it on a place where there are people already there and searching. So Udemy, for example, we've got a lot of people that are putting courses on Udemy um, and, and people are searching for those things every day. Sometimes their employer pays for the course. So they're getting it basically for free, but it's part of this con- you know contract that they have with Udemy. And so, and this is very interesting because now 
that suddenly gives you access to people. You just taught them something that you already knew, whether it's about real estate, whether it's about software engineering, whether it's about some tech that you know, something quick, a brain dump, something that you knew. And then and then now you have access to human beings. Now they, they're going to reach out to you. Now you're going to have a call with them. Now you're going to hear their other problems. And now maybe you could put an app out there. Maybe you could do something else. So we see a whole lot of of, of this, basically, a chain thing where and in small bets itself is exactly this. I mean, if you think about it, right, it started as a course. Daniel decided, you know what, like we got to try, uh, you know, people love the discord. People love the community aspect. Let's open it up. Let's let people teach other than me in this. Let's let's do more. Let's. Uh, and so one thing sort of leads to the other once you sort of have access to people. And I think this is a very um, interesting thing. But but to go back to sort of your, your original question, I've seen all kinds of small bets now that I didn't think you know, we've. Um, We've got this guy, Greg, in the community who, who recently put out an app um, that, that asks you questions via voice. And so you, it just sends you a link. And it's almost like a podcast that you kind of do asynchronously. But it's really great if, if you have um, if you have um, um, a, a newsletter or something like that. But the person answers the questions. It then transcribes them, allows you to edit it. It uses the fancy AI tech that's out there now. And it's really cool. And I think there's some really interesting use cases for this. Like even forget about podcasts or like writing a newsletter. But even if you want to write a book, like just ask the questions, have this thing, you know, uh, ping you and then and then you answer the question. And then suddenly you've got, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs of your book structured into this thing. So I think there's some really there's some interesting stuff. I mean, that's just one example. But there's so many um, um, so many different things people are building. It's just most of them are small. You know, I think I think this is this is the main thing is just try to time box it. Uh, if, If you're spending six months a year. I don't tend to like those small bets, even though, you know, people call them small bets. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not that small, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I was at risk, right? Now, now you know, you, you, what if it fails, right? Yeah, yeah, and there's cost attached. That's also a thing, right? Like, cost, cost of living, you got to pay for your, your mortgage or whatever, or you still have to eat, and it's not all ramen, right? Uh, it shouldn't al- always just be ramen. I don't think that's a healthy way. I'm <laughs> glad you're still with us, because, like, just eating, like, the, the cheapest of food is never really good, particularly in a, in a stressful environment, but, <laughs> you know. They made that, a, they made that, um, the, I, you know, it's, a, it's funny to call that out, but the VC world has made that, like, their 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 mantra you know like ramen profitable which is which is good you know but but it's just man you don't need to live that way you know like there are ways to make money right now on the internet more ways than ever and one individual could do more than ever by themselves and 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 if you just you know expand your horizons out of the 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 being tied to one idea there's so many things that pop up that that you didn't even think you could you you would do before you know do, do people also look outside of the realm of kind of software specific businesses? Because I know that we all kind of come from an engineering background. We all know how to code. We know how to throw up a website or whatever. But do you also see like uh, real estate being an example of this, something that is completely outside of the digital, digital domain as well? Yeah, we've got some people that are doing short term rentals. We've got one guy, I think, out in Portugal, six guys, Sal, I'm, I, I talk to sometimes. Uh, he's got he's got short term rentals via Airbnb out in Portugal on the beach. It's very interesting. I mean, people buy different things. Right. And they just it's a it's a cash flowing business, man. And I think it makes money. It's, it's sustainable. Um, it, you know, and, and you see a whole lot of that. You also see people going to micro acquire. And 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 um, they, they they basically they struggle with the marketing aspect. So they think maybe I'll buy something that already makes money and I'll add the additional things to it. I think that's a decent path too, but but a little bit more risky because now you're putting money up and 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 then these other things. But yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff people are doing. Real estate for sure. I mean, it's one of those things. But people do newsletters. You know, they do they paid they, they try for a few months with a paid newsletter, see if it works out. They try you know all kinds of different things that 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 are not just software. But there is a lot of software. It attracts a lot of tech people. And so and I think the main thing that Daniel has done is like sort of get the tech people to think outside of just software, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I've noticed that in, in my own approach as well. Like ever since I, I understood that Daniel's approach and also like Rob Walling's stair-stepping approach, I think they're very similar. Like the idea of like building small things and just building a foundation of income through like, I don't know, Shopify plugins or WordPress plugins, apps, like little tiny things on somebody else's app store and then slowly creating your path to whatever comes next, right? Might be a personal brand, might be a SaaS business, might be some e-commerce, whatever it is, but you, you kind of slowly aggregate stability into your life and then 
from one that works, you just go further. I think there's a, a lot of compatibility between these two. And it's, and it's really nice. It's, it's nice to, it's nice to hear that there's a strong diversity of these businesses and there's still, um, alignment because they're all kind of built similarly, right? Small bets, look at what works and then act on that. Um, one, one thing you just mentioned was AI in, in these things. And I, I have two questions really. Like how, how much AI do you use inside the community to actually orchestrate the community? You know, like events, or I think you have this very, um, snappy chatbot inside the, the community as well. That's one use of it. And then also how much, how much do you, do you see a shift? Maybe without how much do you see a shift in, um, what businesses incorporate AI as and with? in the, the businesses that are run by people inside the community? Well, I mean, I think these tools, you know, AI in general has just made it so much easier for individuals. So just thinking about it, about them as tools that you can use to build things. I mean, I use it to help me with coding, right? I could write code, right? I, I have been writing code for 15 years. Well, let's say 10 years because five years I was maybe in management, but I was still writing some code even when I was a director. So um, I've been writing code for a long time and I still use this stuff. Why do I use this stuff? Because, man, I don't want to write all this HTML and all this boring you know, tailwind. I just tell GPT or, or, or now Cloud Open was just just you know produce the page for me and it's just man, it's so good it's so fast so just as as a set of tools it's really powerful or even just I have a transcript that I spoke out that has errors I give it to GPT and I say clean this up for me don't add extra words just clean it up just make it make sense um, and and it's good at that kind of stuff like stuff that would take editing that would take you days now could happen very very you know uh, would take you hours maybe not days could happen very, very quickly in seconds. And so this is the kind of stuff that I think speeds up people's time to get a product out, right? So you could, you could, you could place more small bets, but then you could also embed this stuff into your tooling, into the, into the things that you're building. And you mentioned the small bot, which is our witty, I won't say who it's got, a, you know, who it copies in terms of personality, but somebody <laughs> on Twitter that curses a lot and he's very, very smart. You know, we admire this guy like crazy. And, and uh, uh, you know, the personality is loosely based off of based off of that. Anti, I'll just give a hint, anti-fragile. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and, and so anyway, um, uh, so, so it curses like crazy, but it gives really good advice. And it took some really fine tuning on the prompt. To get it to curse and to get it to behave the way. So that's sort of the magic sauce behind it is, is, is that. And it's it's glued into our Discord so people can chat with it on there. But we, we've recently started moving over to Campfire and we're gonna make Campfire more of a more of a more of a thing. Discord has some issues. I mean it's got great APIs, it's decent for running a community, but but the, there's a lot of problems with Discord as well. I mean, you don't know who you're talking to, for one. You have somebody with a nickname. They have no – and so you, you you have no idea, right? But but we've got people's profiles in the directory. We've got all kinds of tools in small bets that are very helpful that, you know, when you're speaking to somebody, you sort of want to know what projects they have. You want to know what they're into. So you can have a better conversation. And, and Discord doesn't allow for any of that. And so we want to do all of that in Campfire and basically this bot, the way it's integrated into Campfire now, it automatically creates threads in Campfire and it's going to do more and more. It'll register you for events if you want. It'll, it'll you know, it's, and so, it, you know, we're going to, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're using AI in a lot of interesting ways. I mean, we, we basically get transcripts out of the recordings. We have, you know, lots of insights about that. We're actually not necessarily, we do all of that right now, but we're not actually surfacing it too much. But very, very soon, hopefully, we'll let you chat with the bot, and and it'll tell you what happened in that event, and and whether it's worth you checking out. And so we're we're we're, we're going to do all of that. I mean, I think it's 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 easy enough now. The two guys can do it. You know, this is this is the thing that I really want to call out is that most of the people watching this, they could probably do it. You know, they could use these tools, and it just makes um, yeah, it's pretty amazing time. I think. Yeah, that that is to me like the the result of Claude or ChatGPT or whatever, even even the the local LLMs like Llama three. I'm I'm working a lot with that because I I don't want to give my data to anybody on a on a platform, so I run it like on my own servers. But any of these are already crazy good at doing certain things. Not all things, but if you tell them the right things and prompt engineering, I guess, is what you need to understand and learn to to get them to do these things for you. But once they do it, that's spectacular. But what it facilitates, like what it enables you to do is just run things that would have required 20 people working full time. And now you get to do it like all by yourself or with one or two people. That's the crazy part of AI for me. Not just what the, the technology does, but how much it impacts a workflow and how it restructures work as a concept right yeah it's uh it's a lot of 
it's a lot of fun to see you build these things. It's a lot of fun to see people generally use them in their workflow. I was talking to Tyler Tringus of the, the Com Company Fund, who recently invested into Podscan, my business. So it was, it was, there's a whole thing going on. But he was he was he's using it internally too for the fund, right? In the fund, operating the community of the fund, where the mentors speak with the the people that are funded, and the, all all of that is just facilitated by AI. And he gives these tools into the companies that the fund puts money into as well. So now you get kind of a, an operating system that is built for you, but nobody has to be paid to run it. That is just spectacular. Like building a business has never been as easy and like doing work that you don't really know how to do has never been as easy and cheap as it is today. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily work that you don't know how to do. It's just work that you don't necessarily want to do. Yeah, so like, right. You know, it's like yeah. it, you'd rather not do. You'd rather not do some of that administrative or whatever it is, right? And, and by the way, you know, one of the things you have to be careful with, especially with the community, is because you could automate like crazy right now. You know, I think we're trying to be careful with that because we do. You know, um, there's something really nice about this human connection, right? Like this is, and a lot of people are lonely today. I don't think AI. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe AI fixes it, but I don't think it fixes it. I think people need human connection, and so. Um, some things you almost don't want to automate, but, but the, the boring stuff, definitely. Right. Like I think it makes a lot of sense. And that's what I hear you say. Like you say, use it as a tool, like don't use it to replace people, but use it to replace an hour of work and condense it into 20 seconds. Right. That's what it is. It's a, it's a better tool. It's a power tool, quite literally, because it's, you know, quite, quite power intense, I guess, all the computation and stuff, but it's just a tool. It's not a replacement for a person. hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah. Wow, man. I'm I'm excited to see what the future holds for small bets. And you already kind of hinted at a couple things that are going to going to happen. But like what what do you want this community to look like over the next couple of years? Do you have a vision for this or do you just take it as it goes? Um, you know, this, this is an interesting thing. I mean, I I I I I think da- Daniel's pragmatism has has started to seep into me. And so now I'm I'm uh, you know, I like to think of things one step at a time, one small bet at a time. Anything we try is basically now ends up being um, one, one small. You know, I want I want to not to go off on a tangent, but I want to tell an interesting story. So so when I when I joined Walmart, when after they acquired us, you know, I was now in charge of this pharmacy thing. I had to go to Bentonville, Arkansas. That's their headquarters. Everyone has to touch base with the mothership after they acquired. And one, I was shocked when I got there because Bentonville, Arkansas is in the middle of nowhere. And it's a beautiful town. It's, you know, it's got it's got this this wonderful museum there. Uh, uh, the Crystal Bridges, the, the original painting of George Washington that's in the dollar bill is there. All these things in the middle of nowhere. How did that happen? This guy, Sam Walton, started a company called Walmart, you know, 40, 50 years ago, and he changed his entire town. I mean, they got, a, a, you know, the largest museum of American art in the country in that town. But not, not just that. I mean, there's so many things there and it's just an unbelievable thing. But think about how did that happen? Right. It's not like Sam Walton. You know, this guy comes from poverty. You know, he, he was he was a farmer. You know, he was still driving his truck with his dogs in the back. And so how did this guy do all of that? He started the company at 45. And so you think about all of that. Did you do you think he sat down and said, I got this master plan. I'm going to change my I'm going to start this retail thing. I'm going to change my town. I'm going to change my country. I'm going to do he didn't do any of that. Right. And so I think a lot of the best sustainable things happen just one step at a time. The guy literally opened a five and dime, which is like a penny store. That was his first store. And he literally sold whatever he could. And then the next small bet was he put an ice cream thing in front of it and see if that sells. And that sold. He was selling women's undergarment, whatever sells. He would he would he would bring it in and try to sell it. And next thing you know, he opens up a, a huge retail store, then the second one, then the third. Then he's taking over the country. But it all happened. It wasn't some grand scheme or master plan. He first, you know, found a small bet that works, then found another one, then kept layering on. And it just became this huge thing that is now very robust. I would say even in the age of Amazon, they haven't died off. You know, the, the pharmacy business alone that I was a part of is a $35 billion business. You know, that's huge, right? And so it's just it's just an unbelievable thing that the guy built, but he didn't set out to do that. And so I tell the story because I want to be like that guy. Like, I don't want to be like these pie in the sky guys that that want to change, the, that get sold a dream and get want to change the world. You know, I, I just want to build the next thing. And the next thing right now, um, you know, I think we, we just added free, met free, free, like, I don't want to call it free trial, but people could watch up to three recordings. Um, it's something that people have been asking for to see, you know, what kind of classes we have and all of that. So we just added that. That was a nice little neat feature. Um, we're good. And it's working really well, by the way, conversion rate. We were getting a ton of traffic to the site. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't, we weren't capturing any of those emails. Now, 
it's 4% conversion. We're, get, we're getting 4% of the traffic's emails. And now we have those emails. We can reach out to them. Potentially, we could try to sell them the bigger thing later if they want it. Um, but, you know, these are little things. Like we do things like this. Like we're going to try this thing, see if it works. If it doesn't work, great, we'll throw it out. We only spent two weeks on that thing. And, and, and so... And so this is my mindset now. You know, I hinted at those things with the bot, but you know, every one of those things, if I can't layer it into a small bet where I could do it in a week or two, then then I'm not going to do it. You know, it's not for me. It's for somebody else to to build something big like that. Oh, uh, that's cool. I I love that you apply like you walk the walk, right? You apply the principle of small bets to how the community works. You teach it to the people in the community. They get their bets going, and the whole thing itself is a bet in your life, in Daniel's life. I love this. This is just authentic, like using your own knowledge. And, and implementing it in a way that shows just, yeah, it's, it's, it's trustworthy. That's what I love about this community. There's no fakeness. It's just, you do, you walk the walk. And I really appreciate that. And I think uh, you've made a, we, man, you made a super interesting case for it too, with the, with the Sam Walton story. Like there is, if, if you do something that has never been done before, how can you plan for it? Like, right? How could you potentially or possibly plan for something that just isn't even, it has never been like codified into like a structure or anything like that. It, it makes a lot of sense to just take it one step at a time, conscious step at a time, measured step at a time, but still just a step at a time. And I really like it. I'm here for it. And if, the li dear listeners of this wonderful show are here for it as well. Where would they go to find out more about you and about the community and about all the wonderful things that you've shared here so far? Sure. So we, we got small. We did, Earlier this year, we actually bought the dot com. It's a very interesting story. It's told inside the community somewhere. You can find that thread. But we bought the dot com for a lot of money. Um, so we have smallbits.com and they could go there. And, and, and I think I think the link to my Twitter and Daniel's Twitter is right on the on the landing page of small bets as well. So I won't, I won't, um, I won't spend too much time on that, but there is, we're going to, we're going to, after this show comes out, we're going to put a, um, uh, a, a, a promo with, with your name, Arvid. On ah. it. So the code will be Arvid. You'll have to plug it in, find out and, and, and you know, get a huge discount uh, to, to this, to the small bets membership. Um, so we'll, I'll set that up right after this call. It's not, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Com is where they can find me and find everything about the community. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I, I wish I would have been, I, I wish the discount would have been around when I started <laughs> joining the community, but I guess, you know, to, I, I I'm think, glad. I paid 375. Uh, yeah, me too. You know, so, <laughs> I, 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 I I told Daniel, I think it was too cheap, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yep. anyway, uh, <laughs> I won't get into it. <laughs> don't don't tell that to the guys on Hacker News, though. I think that's no. going to start quite the conversation. Man, uh, Louis, th thank you so much for being on the show. This was a really nice insight into your story, into the small bet story, and kind of the synthesis of it all. I really appreciate this, like how you kind of pulled it all together. That that was quite enjoyable, and I I just see so many similarities in like where we come from and how we approach entrepreneurship. It's really nice to talk to a like minded guy really appreciate it thank you thank you very much for having me arvid and you know it's it's awesome to talk to someone i've admired for a long time on Twitter. thank you i'm <laughs> right back at you thanks so much and that's it for today i will now briefly thank my sponsor acquire.com imagine this you're a founder who's built a really solid SaaS product you acquired all those customers and everything is generating really consistent monthly recurring revenue that's the dream of every SaaS founder right Problem is, you're not growing for whatever reason. Maybe it's lack of skill or lack of focus or applying lack of interest. You don't know. You just feel stuck in your business with your business. What should you do? Well, the story that I would like to hear is that you buckled down, you reignited the fire, and you started working on the business, not just in the business. And all those things you did, like audience building and marketing and sales and outreach, they really helped you to go down this road, six months down the road, making all that money. You tripled your revenue and you have this hyper successful business. That is the dream. The reality, unfortunately, is not as simple as this. And the situation that you might find yourself in is looking different for every single founder who's facing this crossroad. This problem is common, but it looks different every time. But what doesn't look different every time is the story that here it just ends up being one of inaction and stagnation because the business becomes less and less valuable over time and then eventually completely worthless if you don't do anything. So if you find yourself here, 
already at this point, or you think your story is likely headed down a similar road, I would consider a third option, and that is selling a business on acquire.com. Because you capitalizing on the value of your time today is a pretty smart move. It's certainly better than not doing anything. And acquire.com is free to list. They've helped hundreds of founders already. Just go check it out at try.acquire.com slash Arvid, me, and see for yourself if this is the right option for you, your business at this time. You might just want to wait a bit and see if it works out half a year from now or a year from now, just check it out. It's always good to be in the know. Thank you for listening to the Bootstrap Founder today. I really appreciate that. You can find me on Twitter at Avid Kahl, A-R-V-A-D-K-A-H-L. And you find my books and my Twitter course there too. If you want to support me and this show, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get the podcast in your podcast player of choice, whatever that might be. Do let me know. It would be interesting to see. And leave a rating and a review by going to ratethispodcast.com slash founder. It really makes a big difference if you show up there because then this podcast shows up in other people's feeds. And that's, I think, where we all would like it to be, just helping other people learn and see and understand new things. Any of this will help the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.